The year was 1890. It was just 25 years after the end of the Civil War. The roads here in Roanoke were still dirt. Cows still roamed the downtown. Roanoke's population had reached 5,000 just six years before, and that happened to be the same year the town of Roanoke became a city. It was a year that would become the cornerstone for trade in a city that was still, well, looking for its way. It was the year that several forward-thinking businessmen gathered to plot the course of commerce for this fledgling city. That's when they formed the city's first chamber of commerce. Well, certainly a lot has changed for Roanoke in one and a quarter century. Passenger rail came, passenger rail left. Passenger rail is coming back. In 1910, foreseeing the coming of the automobile, Roanoke started to pave the streets, starting with a road to Holland Station. That was a venture that was sponsored by the Chamber. The Patrick Henry Hotel was built, again, sponsored by your Chamber. In 1942, the Chamber again proved that its mindset was on the future, and with intentional decision-making, they adopted the line, Things don't just happen. The nation went to war with Germany. After all, things don't just happen and wars don't just finance themselves. So the chamber took it upon itself to promote the sell of war bonds. And by war's end, the chamber was credited with raising, get this, nearly $59 million. That's $808.2 million in today's dollars. In 1949, the star on Mill Mountain goes up. The chamber said in its annual chamber report in part that the star was indeed a great civic asset. The star has brought Roanoke wider favorable publicity throughout the nation than any one thing which has been undertaken here in our past history. But if paved roads, stars, and pretty much single-handedly funding World War II isn't your thing, maybe this is. You ain't not going to... In 1955, the Chamber brought Elvis to Roanoke and only charged a dollar. Of course, the Roanoke Times did call him the hillbilly Frank Sinatra, so at a buck, people might have felt like at first they were being overcharged. Of course, we all know that if he were alive today, Don Epperly would uh, either find that quote infuriating or downright funny. We miss you, Don, but your legacy lives on. Of course, the chamber wasn't without its detractors. In fact, in 1960, president of Norfolk Western Railway, Stuart Sanders, had a few things on his mind, and apparently a filter was not one of them. The Roanoke's Chamber of Commerce today is uh, wholly outmoded and inadequate to meet the needs of a city of the size of Roanoke is today. That's okay. The chamber didn't take it too seriously. I mean, come on. Even railroad tycoons can get it wrong on occasion. The chamber has a long history of not taking itself too seriously. Dinners like these have often resulted in a lot of self-deprecating humor. And if you haven't been to a leadership Roanoke Valley retreat, just assume there are reasons that, well, you haven't heard the stories. It is super secret for a reason. Not really, it's just a lot of fun. But one thing the Chamber has always taken seriously is the infrastructure and economic well-being of the Roanoke Valley. Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce. Lobbying for you, your family, and your business and the economic well-being of the Roanoke Valley for 125 years and for the next one and a quarter century. Thank you for being part of this magnificent journey. <laughs>